This channel is supported by my Patreon. If you want to help out, the link is in the description below. All right, let's get this box open and see what we got. People have asked me a bunch of times to show more of the work I've done as a commercial sculptor. One of my oldest customers is a company that makes custom erasers. And these are just little themed erasers uh, that's used to sell movies and products and all kinds of stuff, just used as promotional items. Over the years, I've done tons of them. The very first job I did for them was this spider. And here's the finished product. It's an eraser and it actually works as an eraser, complete with a pencil hole. They're custom designs. Every one is different, so I never know what I'll be working on next. On a typical job, the client would provide a drawing like the one on the left, and then it would be my job to turn it into a functioning eraser. Then I would sculpt the prototype in wax and send a series of views to the client for approval. And once the client approved the design, I would send a bunch of castings to the manufacturer. And I always held on to a sprued and vented casting in case in the future I had to make more molds. Because these were promotional items, I did a ton of erasers with corporate logos on them. I would do the logos as vector art and then send it to a service bureau to etch on aluminum plates. From those, I'd make a silicone mold, and then I'd cast the logo in a really thin sheet of urethane resin. But soon I brought the whole process in-house and machined the logos on a three-axis mill. It required a workstation-class computer, industrial-grade software, and a three-axis mill. And combined, those things cost more than $25,000. Anything digital back in those days was heartbreakingly expensive. Wax is very fragile. And one thing you have to accept as a wax sculptor is that you're probably going to break the model into pieces when you take it out of the mold. That's why, for me, the wax model is just a step in the process. The actual product are the finished resin castings. The clients would provide the character art, but I'm not sculpting an accurate portrait of the character. I'm sculpting a product that has to fit the requirements of the product, but look as much like the character as possible. I did lots of movie promotion campaigns, and very often we had to sculpt all of the lead characters in the movie. Sometimes we got lots of reference material with plenty of turnaround views of each character. Other times we got very little, and I had to mostly figure out how to make it look as much like the character as possible. This is a Warner Brothers job, and I was already an approved freelance sculptor for them, and that meant that the toy companies could hand me Warner Brothers work, and I didn't have to audition for each job. I also did lots of characters related to products, like this is Little Sprout, owned by Jolly Green Giant. I worked on educational campaigns for schools, libraries, and governments, like this is McGruff, the crime dog, who was teaching kids how to be safe out in a big bad world. I also did themed sets of characters like this pirate. There'd be several erasers in the set and they all had to match the theme. One of the challenges with making erasers is that sometimes you really had to distort the shape like this chubby little pirate ship. The eraser had to have a minimum amount of mass to accommodate the pencil hole, otherwise it just wouldn't work as an eraser. These were the early days of my career, and I was learning how to do silicone mold making and resin casting. And uh, <laughs> unfortunately, back then there was no YouTube to show us how to get things done. Lots of ruined molds, lots of bad castings. Uh, it was a great learning experience for me, and it's just having made hundreds and hundreds of molds, thousands of castings. After a while, uh, you figure some stuff out, and you learn as best you can to do things the easy way. It didn't happen often, but once in a while a client would come by and treat me like a very early version of Midjourney. <laughs> Instead of giving me a drawing or a very specific set of instructions, they would just say something like, make us a weird little alien head, and I got to do pretty much whatever I wanted. Because of that, I own this piece, and I think it would be fun to make it into a more complete sculpture. Hey, if you like this video, watch this video next. I have a Patreon. If you want to support the channel, you can use that. Link is below. Also, there's a super thanks button below, and you can use that for a one-time contribution. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.